John Cusack joins us. John, you're very welcome to the programme. Good morning, Will. Uh, you're a familiar voice to people and certainly a familiar figure in Tullamore because of your work at the Bridge Centre and you're an outgoing, confident, authoritarian figure almost. Um, certainly no hint that anything was ever wrong, but it wasn't yep. always the case with you. No, Will, no. Um, seven years ago, uh, seven years ago now, like I was man- a manager of the Bridge Centre, presently a current job, and was working in the door in the nightclub, um, married, two kids, um, August uh, 2004, uh, we were at a family wedding and we went away on holidays and uh, I was due to go back to work on the Monday morning and I got up and I, t- I was ferocious flu as I thought and put it down to the weather, put it down to a lot of things and went to a local doctor. And within 10 minutes of I suppose talking to her, um, she opened a whole you know, kind of worms for me as it was, it wasn't the flu, it was depression. And what but was she asking you? How did she probe around that? Questions she was asking and your de- demeanour, you know, and um, I, I suppose emotion and looking back and on, I've done a good bit of work on it and I have completed the assist course, but um, it, it's a huge dark area and, like, you know, you're, you, you think you have all the, the... You think you have the flu and you think you have aches and pains and stuff, but it's not actually... And there's a huge stigmata to it, but... Um, I could have been one of those individuals yesterday, seven years ago, that somebody was going to my inquest. And that's how close I was to it. But what was your attitude to suicide? Because I, I kind of a, described you as an authoritarian figure earlier. That's not quite well, right. He, but you, you're, a, you're a take no shit kind of guy and you're a yeah. man's man. And, yeah. you know, did you dismiss like, the I idea said, of depression? I, I, she said to me that I said, no, not a fear. Not a fear. No way. Because, I mean, somebody would look at this, uh, look at me, you know, this individual. How could he, you know, how would you be? But it's amazing. And um, my whole life changed from then. Like, and, and thankfully with the support of my wife and my family and friends, like, and the doctor. And, like, I did go for counselling. And uh, I don't feel ashamed about it. And nobody should feel ashamed about it. It's so, it was a part of my life that I couldn't change. It happened, and you have to deal with it and take it on board. And that's unfortunately this big matter, you know, people are turn around him. And I suppose people are probably thinking now when they're listening to the radio, what? How could he have suffered? Not a fear. But it, it is, it's there. And, like, I've discussed this with Josephine Rigney, and we've been, I spoke to Kieran Malouli last week and told him over the Lions Club are trying to roll out this assist course. It's in every parish. It touches an awful lot of households. And I would urge people that, you know, I mean, I was on medication for a very short period of time because both my wife and the person I went to counselling for felt, you know, that medication, and I'm not saying it is or it's not, and this is, you know, there's, there's pros for it and there's not, but for me it wasn't something I wanted to, and I had to change my, my lifestyle, how I did things, and my space, my time out and stuff like that, and I still, now and again, you would have to check yourself, say, especially coming up to Christmas and especially for my line of work, and, but... Um, and can I ask you, without being too personal, yeah. what was the matter as such? You know, was it that little things were insurmountable, or was there an event that was bothering you? Um, I said financial at the time. Um, I had got involved and tried a few things, and they didn't work. Um, couldn't say no to people. I took so much stuff on board. Um, wasn't able to, to de- you know, I thought I was dealing with things, but when you're going from 6 o'clock in the morning until 12 at night and then coming home, um, going out to work in a nightclub back then and working until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and stuff like that, and you were, it, it's an amazing black hole. It's, it's unbelievable when you're down there. Uh, and you're trying, to, it's like you're trying to climb out of this hole and you just can't do it. You just, you just physically can't do it. You weren't able, like, and, and lucky enough, my employer's, um, Christy May and I were hugely supportive mm. at the time that I got my time out and I got myself sorted and like and there but is you, hope you were out oblivious there. to all of this building up and when you look back on it or when you speak to your family were there signs that this was manifesting? Oh yeah, yeah. When you think back on other war signs, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, you were snappy, your mood changes. Um, you know, you were dragging yourself around. Uh, things were swimming. Your head, you know, be swimming. Your brain, you think it was going to burst at some stages. And, you know, that's why, you know, I mean, I did contemplate suicide. And how seriously did you think about it? Uh, very, 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 very well. And I'll just leave it at that. 
the very, very close to it. I often wonder who or what was looking over me to say, look, this is not the right thing to do. I was very close to it. I thought it was, you know, and to be quite honest, it felt like there was a major weight lifted off your shoulder that you, mm. you know, that it was all over. Everything else became, um, nothing else mattered, whether my, you know, two young daughters, my wife, didn't come that particular evening, didn't, nothing else came into it. Nothing but else I, I wonder what is the difference, yeah, or what happens differently between somebody like you who gets to that point, a very, very serious point of no return, and then somebody who crosses the line and does it. What is the yeah. difference? Well, I don't know. Each individual is different. And like when I look at so many people in the last seven year period in, in our area alone, and you know, like, I mean, that's why I, this, this course is highly, highly, highly valuable. I mean, there are signs out there. We all, you know, whether you latch on to the signs or not. I mean, since I did the, the assist course, um, I have engaged in what I learned with two different individuals. And what difference does it make for them? They're now on the other side of it. They're moving on. They've, you know, I mean, it is out there. I'm not saying it'll work for everybody, will, but, you know, it's this whole stigma and suicide years ago, the stigma around it, people weren't allowed to be buried in consecrated ground mm. and all that sort of stuff. It's a huge illness now. And I read some books on it, you know, there was a doctor that it, 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 suicide it's, uh, or depression is it's an emotion, not an illness. And it is all your emotions gathered up. Now, I mean, I went to a fantastic counsellor in Port Harlington and she was she was absolutely the first day I went to her like it was to be an hour session I spoke for three hours non-stop and it didn't even feel like three hours but I lifted all this storm and like my wife and my family they were an amazing support to me and I you know and, well, but and did you have to say, be persuaded John and the reason yeah. I ask this question okay I'm just looking at the five cases that were listed yesterday and I know the more. five I would be very familiar with the but five they're all men yeah. Every single yeah. one of them is male, See, and, uh, and suicide look, I mean, is predominantly like, a male problem. Yeah, look, man, it's like this. Who, like what man, it's like defeat, it's like anything else, it's like courage to pick up and say, look, I am in trouble, I am. And that's why, like, you know, the, the current financial situation, the amount of people that are under pressure, I see it every day. I know of stories. I know people under serious financial pressure. And it's the whole stigma of being able to go in and ask, I'm in bother. How can we sort this out? Nobody wants to know, or, or you know, and gossip vendors, a whole lot of local community things and stuff like that. I mean, this the whole assist course came from, you know, from back from Australia and stuff like that. And we're, we're pride, pride. It was huge pride for me, Will. And like even said, talking to you this morning, like I hope by me talking to you will help somebody else out there that are contemplating, that are thinking about it. There yeah, well, you were the last person in the world I expected to call in. I have to say, I did not expect that John Cusack would come out with a story like this. You know, see, there you are. I mean, how many more John Cusacks are out there? It's not, you shouldn't be ashamed about it. And I would urge anybody out there, there is plenty of help. Josephine Rigney is doing fantastic work there. There is Samaritans aware. I mean, you know, there is so much help, but we need just to pick up that phone. Um, there are, like, as, as I spoke to Kieran Mullally last week, assist needs to be rolled out in every community in and small village in Ireland. Yeah, but it, is, is there not a curious personality quirk in men where we just don't ask for help? Whether no, it's we don't. a simple thing it's like going will. to the doctor. I would say, for me, it was pride. And when, the, when Dr. Sheehan said to me, and I would be forever grateful to her for asking the questions that morning, because I would say if you went to another doctor, they would have, might have said to me, um... John, it's the flu, there's an, um, an antibiotic, there's a start for work, take a few days off. But she recognised straight away that morning. And there was another very good friend that I went to after coming out of the doctor because I said when I went home, I said to my wife, you know, this is more serious than the flu. Mm. And we, I rang a very good friend of ours and I went and spoke to her. She works in the field of mental health. And... I mean, but I had all the, the all the flu symptoms and everything. But when I reflect back on what something happened seven years ago, but unfortunately, you know, like when sometimes we're going for a job or going for a loan or going for something, and you get all these questions and people are afraid to tick the boxes, and as it reflects on how, you know, if you're in, med it, 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 it is like the flu, and you have to deal with it. Yeah. And like it, is, and unfortunately for men, I've seen over. I'm been a juror for a long number of years there now. 
and it's frightening some of the cases that come before us. OK, but you know, even with the flu, men generally will avoid going to the yes. doctor at all costs. Because we will we're not the hardy individual that thinks that we cannot be knocked or knocked on. Yeah, we will not go to the doctor and have examinations and I would for prostate say there cancer. Is and, and that's wrong. why nearly as many men are dying of prostate yes. cancer as women are lost to breast cancer, unfortunately. And I, there, men there's don't nothing to be ashamed of. We shouldn't be ashamed. We should go pick up that phone, go into your local surgery, go to wherever it is, and ask for the help. The help is there, the service is there, there is somebody at the other end of the phone. There is plenty of people, like there's 32 people um, in the assist course in Clonacy alone. There are, you know, if there's somebody in that there, it is all in confidential and we are out there to help. And like, you know, I... But you know a lot of men still won't. I mean, if I'm absolutely crystally clear, yeah. honest with oh, yeah. you, I'm listening to you and I'm yeah. saying, if I was in that position, it's good to know it's there, don't know if it's for me. No, and that's, the, you know, how do you decide that deciding factor or whatever until it goes too far then and then we're in the depths of despair? I was there, Will. I was in that black hole. Um, I'd say I was battling it for maybe the guts of four or five years until it got the better of me one Thursday evening. But I don't know, somebody up there said it wasn't my time. Somebody up there said, look, uh, this is not for you. And then in September 2004, um, a first cousin of mine was killed in a tragic road, a road accident just outside Tullamore. Right. And I'd say that had a turning point as well. All these things happened, and my grandfather died in November of the same year. All these things, and you had to deal with those. But mm. I would say, had I not gone prior to that, you wouldn't be able to deal. It's it's a huge. It's in every. It wants. It's probably in every household today, and I think we're. we're we're squabbling about money, and Barry Cowan made a, made a very valid point just in the morning. There's no one has died here at this, the politics. There's no one, yes. but the, we're losing sight of the amount of people that are in the depths of despair today. And I would ask people, don't be ashamed. It's nothing to be ashamed of. If you're feeling unwell, pick up the phone, ring people, talk to people, because at the end of the day, who wants to go through what happened in the coroner's court in Tullamore mm-hmm. 5? In, in, and there's more to come. There's more. We're, and like you hear, so you hear a sudden death, and you automatically think, "Is that who's going to be next?" Like there are several people out there suffering, and like it's not to be. Forget about the pride. If you, if God forbid, if you had cancer in the morning, you have to go and you have to get treatment and you have to get sorted out.